Hello guys, Luke here and welcome back to another tech related video. This time we are looking at a computer that uh, we actually don't know what's wrong with it and we're going to try and fix it the best we can. Um, this is the computer right behind me here. It's my cousin Patrick's PC that he games on. It is a bit of an older system, uh, so I you know, don't really have many replacement parts. So hopefully we can fix this computer without replacing any parts. Hopefully it's just uh, a loose cable or it's a, a bent CPU pin or something like that. But anyway, he's got a boot loop issue going on right now where uh, the computer will boot just over and over. It will power cycle on and off and um, it doesn't even show a post screen. I've already plugged in a monitor into this system and uh, it doesn't come up with any post or anything. So here is the PC. Uh, it's a very, very budget case as you can see. It's a Cooler Master case. And here is a look at the internals of the PC guys. You can see it is a bit of a mess, especially because I've already had my hands in this system as well. I've unplugged a few SATA cables from unnecessary hardware. As you can see, the, the CD-ROM drive is not plugged in right now. I didn't think it needed to be. And um, only the boot drive is plugged in. And and um, so we, you can see here we have an Intel stock cooler on some Intel piece, uh, CPU, I don't know what it is yet. Um, it has a P55 motherboard. Um, I'll have to look up what chipset that is, like, uh, what CPU runs, like what generation runs on this board. I'm not familiar with it. The hardware itself really doesn't matter. It just matters that we get this system working again. Uh, you can see how we got just a bunch of you know, cables here, but I have already checked into this and everything seems to be plugged up correctly. Okay, I've just plugged a power cable into the rear of the seat of the PC. It's just a power cable, nothing else, no video out or anything. We just wanna, I just wanna show you the actual issue that's happening here. So let's go ahead and power this guy on. Everything lights up, the switch is off. I'll let you see that again. So as you can see, it continues to do this over and over. It tries to boot and then switches off about three seconds later. And this will keep happening. And I've unplugged drives, plugged in drives. Nothing seems to affect this at all from happening. So I believe it's down to three components. It's either the CPU, the motherboard or the power supply. But I'm leaning against the power supply as well just because this is a swapped out unit as well. My cousin told me he actually swapped out the other power supply to see if that was the problem. And he has put in this 500 watt power supply from Beecroft. I've never even heard of Beecroft. He uh, had the same issue happen with a previous power supply. So I'm guessing it's not the power supply. Uh, I do have a spare one, so I could test that as well, but I'm leaving that as a last resort. Um, so I've narrowed it down to either CPU or motherboard issues, uh, which are some of the hardest to figure out. Because if it's not bent CPU pins, then uh, it's going to require replacement motherboard and CPU possibly. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go and stop this poor PC from power cycling there. Turn it off. And uh, so yeah, we are actually going to, uh, I'm actually going to switch to a tripod now because I'm going to stop vlogging so I can get my hands in this system and um, take the CPU off, CPU cooler off and check the motherboard, pin, the CPU pins basically. So bear with me, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, we have the camera back in handheld mode. Now I'm gonna get really as close as I can to this socket. Let the autofocus focus in here on the pins. So we're looking at the pins right now, very close up. Uh, I can't really immediately see any bent pins. They all look pretty good. So it's not the CPU pins. So now I'm curious what it might actually be. Um, I might have to just remove the motherboard and see if there's anything shorting out the motherboard because there could be like a a loose screw behind the motherboard somewhere. So yeah, the next step guys, unfortunately, is I'm gonna have to pretty much unplug everything and take the motherboard out and give it a closer inspection. So as you can see guys, I, I did a bit of a cut there because it was uh, a bit boring, but um, I've reseated the CPU. I'm about to apply new thermal paste and put the CPU cooler back on. I'm basically gonna put the whole system back together. I checked closely at the socket when I was putting the CPU back in and it, it looks like there is a loose pin. So there isn't a missing or a bent pin, but there is a pin that is loose. Um, so I have best seated it back the way it should be, like it should be orientated under the CPU and I fix the CPU back to the board. So hopefully once I plug everything back in and connect everything up, we should be able to get uh, past the, the boot screen, you know, or past the boot 
loop. So this problem is a little bit tricky. Um, it might turn out that we have to replace the motherboard and it is a fairly old system anyway. So it's probably not recommended to change the motherboard. It's probably just better to build a whole new system, honestly. Um, but I mean, it's probably not an option for my cousin Patrick to get another PC right now. Let's plug everything back in. I'm gonna cut again now because it's gonna be boring and we'll go to a test boot and see how it goes. Okay guys, after <coughs> putting everything back in, reapplying the thermal paste, putting the CPU cooler back on, I hope it's worth it. So it seems that our problems are still there, unfortunately. I don't believe it's a dead CPU because a CPU without actual pins on it, uh, it's pretty pretty safe to bet that it's not gonna, not gonna just die like that. Um, so I'm guessing it's something to do with the motherboard. So looks like we're going to have to source another motherboard for this system. Bit of a pain in the ass because these are old motherboards. I'm, pro I'm probably going to have to go to a second hand shop and try and find a similar computer, like a whole just desktop that has the same motherboard and go from there. Okay, we are back and five days and $15 later, we got ourselves a second CPU. Uh, this is simply an old um, i3 CPU. It is the right chipset though, 1156 pins. Uh, so it's the same as the motherboard, same as the CPU we've got in there now, the i5. But now the annoying part is I've got fresh thermal paste on there. I'm gonna have to remove that again, apply more fresh thermal paste and then put this bad boy on. And uh, I might just go without thermal paste and cooler for a, for a second, just to see if it boot loops again, because I don't want to apply all this thermal paste if it ends up being the motherboard that's dead. So bear with me guys, I'm gonna cut here again. Hopefully, uh, I'm not wearing another set of clothes. Hopefully this is the solution here. <laughs> so I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see here, we have the motherboard attached, just um, the ATX power 12 pin and the eight pin power for CPU. Um, the previous power supply only had a 4-pin for this, but I don't think it matters, it's still boot looping anyway. We have it plugged into a 300-watt power supply, and um, there is no on button uh, fitted because it's not attached to the case, but if we go ahead and power on via the two terminals here, still boot looping, still turns off. Have a look here at the lights. All the lights come on, then go off. And again, on and off. So same thing, same problem, different CPU, different power supply, Nothing else attached. So unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to go ahead and buy a motherboard online. I have contacted the guy on Gumtree again. So uh, I contacted the guy on Gumtree for the CPU for $15, we got that. That's not the problem. So now we've contacted the guy on Gumtree for a motherboard. Uh, it comes with a case and a hard drive and a fan apparently. So it comes with a few things. I really just need the motherboard. But yeah, uh, it's 20 bucks for that. So hopefully if all goes well, it'll only be a $35 all up max spend on fixing this PC. Hopefully that is the, the case. Is the mother, I'm guessing it's the motherboard. There's nothing else really I can test uh, with the hardware that I have currently. It's simply just, I'm pretty 99% positive it's the motherboard. Oh man, okay. Enter, second PC. Pick this up on Gumtree for 20 bucks. Um, it's not a whole system. It's simply the case and the motherboard and there's a fan in it basically. That's about it. All right, so let's go ahead and take the side panel off this bad boy. Um, it's got a Windows 7 Home key on top. And this is what we're working with, guys. So unfortunately, it's probably not as nice a board as the one we had. We had a nice Gigabyte P55 board next to us here, but this one is an OEM style board, so ugly green PCB. Um, it does have four RAM slots, which is good because we had four sticks of RAM originally, so we can put them in. A lot of the motherboards I was looking at secondhand for uh, P55 chipset, only had two RAM slots, so that's good this has four. Um, so yeah, we're gonna clean this PC up. It's filthy inside. Um, it looks like an animal has lived inside here. Um, it is filthy. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm gonna save you guys the boringness of cleaning a PC on the inside. But yeah, I'm basically gonna clean it, take the motherboard out, and we're gonna put a CPU in and boot it up and see what happens. Okay guys, once again, we are back and here is the dead motherboard. It's a pity that it died because it's a nice motherboard. It's got the i3 processor in it and over here we have this mess, which is the i5 in the replacement motherboard, the Dell XPS motherboard from uh, the old case, which is down here. And over here is the replacement motherboard. Now it might look a bit of a mess right now, it's only because I don't want to install it in the case until I know that it is working. So everything is wired up. Everything, um, I've left two RAM sticks out just to, just for compatibility. The CPU call is not on the CPU right now. Also, just want to make sure this works before I go ahead and waste more thermal paste on the CPU because obviously I'll have to put thermal paste on again. I've already put it on twice before. Um, yeah, everything is wired up, graphics cards on. 
It's a GT710 Drivers card, by the way. And I have a keyboard and mouse connected at the back IO to, uh, yeah, down there, keyboard and mouse and a monitor right there. I know it's a bit janky. Again, just wanna make sure this works before I go ahead and install it in the case. So yeah, without further ado, I'll turn the power supply on. Okay, and we have a little orange LED here to let us know that the motherboard is receiving power. Now, unfortunately, I had to wire it up to this case because I had to use the on switch on the case. You can see there, um, because the motherboard has no way of like um, shorting two pins to get power on. Um, uh, yeah, I tried, but it didn't work. So I've gone ahead and connected front IO connectors to this case, the case that the motherboard will be going in. So without further ado, guys, here we go, power on. She's spinning up. Everything seems on. Monitor. Oh, look at that. All right, we've got a CMOS checksum error. That's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and actually skip that. So let's press uh, F1. Oh. Yeah, let's reach down there. And it seems to be loading into Windows 7. Oh, wait, no, we blue screened. Okay, we're back uh, only about 10 seconds later. Um, the system decided to switch off. Um, I'm guessing this is because the CPU is getting too hot without the heat sink and fan on top. I'm gonna assume this is in working condition now. Um, I guess that's why it blue screened before because it was getting too hot. So I'm gonna put all this in the case, put new uh, thermal paste on the CPU, put the fan back on and we should be hunky-dory. Okay, back again, hopefully for the last time. Uh, the computer is now all wired up. Uh, yes, it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not cable managed yet, but I just wanna see if this actually works and doesn't blue screen or anything like that. So I've got a monitor here, keyboard and mouse hooked up. Let's go ahead and power it on. Oh, she's a noisy one. Mostly because of the hard drives. Okay, good sign. Ooh, we're getting a blue screen still. Oh, I've just rebooted the system out of the, the BIOS. Um, I think RAID mode was the was uh, stopping us from booting up. So let's have a look what happens now. Start normally. Come on, I wanna see that logo. I'll zoom in here a bit. Oh yes, okay, so it doesn't freeze at the same part that it used to. I think we're good. So, or other, obviously, because we have a new, well not new, but a replacement motherboard, it had in the BIOS um, RAID mode set instead of AHCI. Okay, we are successfully at the desktop, finally. It took a little while, but we're here. Um, yeah, it seems to be fully functional PC again. So thanks to that new motherboard, our problems are solved. This just sucks. I've got a spare CPU now. I've got a high three CPU that I don't really need. Um, I'll have to try and sell that, I guess. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. Um, basically, I was just helping out my cousin with this PC and I thought, oh, why not make a video on it and show you guys the steps that I went through troubleshooting this PC. Um, so basically, I deduced early on that it was either motherboard or CPU. Uh, basically because um, I had just the CPU and motherboard plugged into power and the boot loop was still happening. So that pretty much tells me it's either CPU or motherboard. Um, swapped out the CPU, that wasn't it. $15 down the drain, kind of. Uh, I guess I'll have to sell that. So uh, I got no use for it. And um, yeah, about another $20 later, and we got ourselves a motherboard. So yeah, all is well in the end. $35 is a pretty cheap fix for a PC, especially because you would have had to uh, buy another whole system, probably. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video nonetheless. If you did, leave a like down below, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys around the channel. All right, have a good one.